Okay, we need to talk about Our Town. Our Town is a play by Thornton Wilder that most kids read in school but get bored by because they can't understand it. But when it was first performed in 1938, it was pretty radical. And I think it's still a play about all of us. The opening stage direction reads, No curtain, no scenery. The audience, arriving, sees an empty stage in half light. The only things on stage are two tables set with chairs. Those are supposed to be the kitchen tables of the two main families in the play. And the cast pantomimes all the props. Our town takes place in the tiny town of Grover's Corners, New Hampshire. The stage manager, who's kind of a narrator for the play, gives us a history of the town, and we find out it's very ordinary. The main characters are two kids and their families. They grow up next door to each other, eventually get married, and deal with death. And that is the entire plot of the show. I first read Our Town when I was in a production of it in high school. I played Howie Newsom, the milkman, by the way. I was a careful enough reader to know that the play was packed with meaning, but there were some scenes that I just didn't understand yet. Here's one scene I didn't understand on the first time around. In it, George, the main guy character, is 18. He finished high school literal days ago, and he's getting married to Emily, the girl next door. It's his wedding day, and he's antsy, so he goes over to his new in-law's house to see if he can find Emily. He runs into his new father-in-law, Mr. Webb, and they have a really awkward conversation. Here's me playing George Gibbs, and Neil, my friend who I thought was most like a future father-in-law, playing Mr. Webb. And we've just had a conversation in this scene about um, the superstition that I am not supposed to see my bride on the day of the wedding. Well, George, how are you? Oh, well, fine. I'm fine. M Mr. Webb, what sense could there be in a superstition like that? Well, you see, on her wedding morning, a girl's head apt to be full of clothes and one thing and another. Don't you think that's probably it? Yes. I never thought of that. A girl's apt to be a bite nervous on her wedding day. I wish a fellow could get married without all that marching up and down. Every man that's ever lived has felt that way about it, George. But it hasn't been any use. It's the women folk who've built up weddings, my boy. For a while now, the women have it all their own. A man looks pretty small at a wedding. George, all those good women standing shoulder to shoulder, making sure that the knot's tied in a mighty public way. But you believe in it, don't you, Mr. Webb? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Don't you misunderstand me, my boy. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. Then don't you forget that, George. No, sir. Uh, Mr. Webb, how old were you when you got married? Well, you see, I'd been to college and I'd taken a little time to get settled, and... But Mrs. Webb, she wasn't much older than what Emily is. Oh, age hasn't much to do with it, George, not compared with uh, other things. What were you going to say, Mr. Webb? Oh, I, I don't know. Was I going to say something? George, I was thinking the other night of some advice my father gave me when I got married. Charles, he said, Charles, start out showing early, showing who's boss, he said. Best thing to do is to give an order, even if it don't make any sense, just so she'll learn to obey. And he said, if anything about your wife irritates you, her conversation or anything, just get up and leave the house. That'll make it clear to her, he said. And oh yes, oh yes, he said, never, never let your wife know how much money you have. Never. Well, Mr. Webb, I, I don't so think I, I could... So I took the opposite of my father's advice, and I've been happy ever since. And let that be a lesson to you, George, never to ask advice on personal matters. George, are you going to raise chickens on the farm? What? Are you going to raise chickens on the farm? Uh, Uncle Luke's never been much interested, but I thought... And a book came into my house the other day, George, on the philo system of raising chickens, and I want you to read it. I'm thinking of beginning in a small way in the backyard. I'm going to put an incubator in the cellar. I should say we recorded that scene back in October, and Neil is now living in Russia for a year with his wonderful girlfriend. Neil, if you're watching this, we miss you. As a high schooler, I definitely knew enough to understand the awkwardness of this situation. A father-in-law talking to his future son-in-law about marriage and weddings and what matters about both those things. But reading it now, it's clear to me that Mr. Webb is worried about things he can't really find the words for. That question about George raising chickens on his farm is super loaded. This is the 19-teens, so 
women working was basically out of the question. George is going to have to provide everything for his new family. But he's 18 years old. His father-in-law is wondering whether he can actually do it. He even offers to let George work with his new incubator if other things on his farm fall through. That part about Mr. Webb's dad's advice, which he didn't follow, is also super interesting to me. Mr. Webb loves his daughter Emily and wants her to feel empowered and respected. But empowering and respecting women aren't concepts in his lexicon. All he knows is it's the 19-teens. There is so much BS advice for young men about how to treat women. Mr. Webb may not have language for respect and empowerment, but he knows enough to know that that's all wrong. But George is 18 years old, super susceptible to that kind of advice. And this scene reminds me of the work that a lot of us are doing here on YouTube. Like Mr. Webb, we're grappling with feelings and experiences in our lives that maybe we don't have the words for yet. And by making these videos, and commenting, and watching people who've lived similar experiences, we're all helping each other work through this stuff. And scene. Neil. Thank you for being uh, in this video with me. Thank you for casting me as your father. Absolutely. <laughs>